Welcome to this short introduction to the SSMA 6.0 for DB2. First, let's explore the options that you can set on the program before you even connect to your database. The log file path may come in handy if there are problems in the migration later. At the project level, you can set options such as how to connect to the source and target databases and how tables are going to be mapped uh, typewise by default. You can always override these settings later at the schema and table level. There are three project types for SSMA for DB2, SQL Server 2012, 2014, and Azure SQL DB. Let's create a new project. We will connect to a setOS a DB2 database that uh, has a small database for our example. In our new project, we now have the option to connect to the source and target databases. So let's go ahead and connect to the DB2 database to collect the schema elements for migration. Notice that we have the option to connect to setOS and LUW. The schema will now load partially. We only load the top layer to minimize the amount of time for a large schema. The schema is loaded into a tree with all the table definitions and stored procs and functions, etc. The first thing you would do is to create an assessment report to see how much is automatic migration and how much is manual effort. This report is created in HTML and can be emailed to some of your collaboration partners. You will need to allow active scripting since the report is interactive and has a lot of JavaScript. At the bottom of the report, you can explore each of the errors encountered through the assessment. As you expand and click on the individual errors, you'll see the source code for the source and target database above. You can inspect all the schema definitions, the stored procedures, and the function in the report because in order to provide an exhaustive uh, assessment of the migration, the product had to perform most of those conversions already. SSMA for DB2 tries to assess in terms of hours how much manual labor is required, but the numbers have to be taken with a grain of salt. For a real business size database, this report can easily reach into the gigabytes in size because it contains all of the schema elements to explore. Let's connect to SQL Server. We are now able to see all the databases in the SQL Server we are connected to. We are now ready to convert the DB2 database to SQL Server. Since we already ran the report, the conversion has essentially been performed already, so this goes very quickly. In the output window, you see a brief description, a summary of the errors and warnings from this conversion. In the SQL Server pane, you see DBO, under which the schema has been created, and SSMA underscore DB2, where supporting functions are loaded. As you inspect functions and schema on the DB2 side, you can see the corresponding SQL code below. This is a very simple example with a couple of tables and a function and a stored procedure and an index. Expanding the table definition, you can see the DDL on the DB2 side and SQL side, the type mapping from one to the other, and the actual data in DB2 at the moment. Sometimes you have to reconnect because of database timeout. Here are the actual database records, which we'll try to migrate to SQL Server. And here are the type mappings, where you can change individual type mappings for this particular table.
we need to synchronize the converted schema with SQL Server in order to perform a database migration. I'm choosing to synchronize only the table, but I could have synchronized the entire schema. Let's look at the table in Management Studio. We can see the schema is defined, and let's do a select. There are no records in the database yet, so let's migrate it from DB2. When starting to migrate, we are asked to reconnect to the source and target databases. Having now migrated all the database records from DB2 to SQL Server, we can now inspect or save a detailed report. Now we can check the results of the migration in Management Studio. And it looks like all the records made it intact. Now I'm going to convert the function and the stored procedure and synchronize them with SQL Server and inspect the results in Management Studio. In this simple example, we don't have errors in the code, but otherwise they would be included as comments in the generated SQL Server code uh, where you would have to make changes on your own. This concludes this quick walkthrough of SSMA for DB2. Have fun.